Did you know that intuition is actually... And when you do learn this, I promise you, the more I was able to decipher what was my intuition, what was my gut feeling, and what was... With intuition, I always encourage people to... Today, I want to talk to you about intuition. I want to share with you my learnings, what intuition is and what it could feel like, and how you can develop your intuition to allow that small voice to guide you so that you too can make an impact on this world. Imagine a world where we all listened to our intuition. That small whisper, the little nudge, the gut knowing of something. Imagine the art that would be created, the businesses and organizations that start, ones that would leave a positive impact on people and the environment. Imagine the music we would hear, or the kind words spoken by strangers. Imagine the difference we could make in our world if we learnt to listen to our intuition, to not be afraid of it, not doubt it, not run away from it, but to embrace it. What world would we create? Did you know that Paper Crane of Hope was birthed out of me listening to my intuition? Years ago, I was having dreams about the Paper Crane. I kept seeing the symbol of the Paper Crane everywhere on posters on tv shows movies uh images just paper cranes paper cranes paper cranes i felt like my intuition was telling me to learn how to fold the paper crane now i know that seems so simple but it ended up evolving into something really incredible of what you see today when i kept getting this intuitive nudge i decided to order some origami paper learn to fold the paper crane and while I was doing that, I again felt that intuitive whisper in my gut that I needed to leave that paper crane in my local cafe with a small message of hope and healing on it. So I did that and I documented it on Instagram. And the next thing I know, I was leaving paper cranes in my neighborhood every day for a year, two years, almost three years. And eventually it's evolved into this really beautiful, wonderful space where I can provide counseling to people. And I still have some of those paper crane finders watching me today. What is intuition then? Intuition, my understanding, is that it's that small whisper. It's that knowing. It's that gut feeling that you get in the, the pit of your, of your gut. <laughs> gut feeling. It's that Mm, it's a sensing. But did you know that intuition is actually a very real process where the brain makes use of past experiences along with internal signals and cues from the environment to then help us make a decision. The decision happens so quickly that it doesn't quite register with the conscious mind. It's in the part of the brain where there is no verbal communication. Instead, it's connected to the gut you know how they say that our gut holds our emotions and if your gut health is off then your emotions can be off and this is why we often hear the saying of i had a gut feeling with intuition for some people such as an infj or an infp it's as natural and easy as it is to walk and swim it's just second nature you don't have to think about it but for others it's a skill that needs to be honed in and learnt and I do believe that it is something that everybody can learn and when you do learn this I promise you life can be so much more beautiful and richer full of adventure hopes and plans how can you learn to listen to your intuition and by the way if you like this type of video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel I first learned to listen to my intuition when I was a teenager I had a friend who got me into journaling and every weekend we, I would go to her house and we would pull out our journals and we would just write. We would just write whatever was coming to our mind and she taught me that through this journaling technique we could learn to listen to our intuition. And so we started challenging ourselves on these weekends for our intuition to speak to us so that we could do nice things for her neighbors around the community. I found that the more I was journaling, the more I was able to decipher what was my intuition, what was my gut feeling, and what was coming from my analytical overthinking brain. As I got older, and this is in my early 20s, I, with friends, we would go on little intuitive assignments around the city in Melbourne. 
and we would walk around and we would ask ourselves, who can we bless today? Who can we encourage today? Who can we help today? And this led us to meet some really amazing, incredible people. We had meals with some really lovely people that sadly lived on the streets. And we just had so many amazing adventures in that moment. I would always ask myself when it comes to your intuition on if you should do something, is it good? Is it pure? Is it safe? And when I say safe, I mean physically safe. I wouldn't put yourself in a situation where you could harm yourself. But sometimes it might not feel safe when you need courage to do something. And is it kind to others? So I wouldn't use intuition as an excuse to be a jerk to people, basically. You can learn to pay attention to your intuition when you learn to listen to your body. So understanding your feelings and paying attention to the physical sensations that you have. That's something that I do work on with my counseling clients because often people come to me and they don't, firstly, they don't know what they're feeling or when they are feeling something, they haven't been paying attention to where they feel it in their body. So when someone is talking and they're upset about something, I will say, where do you feel this? Is it here? Is it here? Is it in your, in your tummy? What does it feel like? And as you do that, you can begin to understand the bodily sensations of it feels heavy, it feels like a, a rock is in my throat, it feels like butterflies in my chest. As you learn to understand your feelings and your bodily sensations, then you can begin to pick up on when it's your intuition speaking to you. So for me, I know that something is my intuition when I get goosebumps, I get this, um, like this, I don't even know how to describe this, like a, like this, uh, like an energy in my gut region. Uh, sometimes I can feel like, kind of like an electricity pulsing through me. Intuition can feel calming, it can feel soft, gentle. At times it might actually be trying to get you to safety. So it's a feeling of like, run, get to safety. It's a peace and it's a knowing. It's just this knowing that something is right for you. With intuition, I always encourage people to practice with the small things. And that's why I used to, when I was younger, go on these little in intuitive assignments around the city to practice with the small things because I figured, you know what, if, if my intuition was wrong about buying food for the homeless person, then whatever, there's nothing, I'm not hurting anybody, I'm still helping somebody, I'm still doing something kind. And so you want to practice with the small things. I actually found that when I started Paper Crane of Hope, that was a way for me to get in touch again with my intuition after I shut it down for a long time because I would write little messages on the wings and I would meditate on what that message would be for the person who would find it. And I was just absolutely blown away when people would find my paper cranes, they would send me a private message and they would say, wow, that message was exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you so much. That was so for me. And you know what? If someone found it and the message wasn't for them, it wasn't going to hurt them. It was still going to encourage them. I also like to keep a record in my journal of actions I take when I'm listening to my intuition so that a year down the road, I can look back and I can see like, ah, oh, yes, my intuition was right in that instance. I like to tell people that when it comes to your intuition, that it's always important to stop, to breathe. So a deep breath in. And exhale. And then reflect. And just reflect on how it feels. What sensations you feel in your body when you get that intuitive nudge. What should you do when your intuition is speaking to you and it's about someone now, I, in the past, have gotten myself into trouble, although later on I realized I was correct and I was accurate. Where I went wrong in my younger years was I was unwise in the way I approached that person and told them what I intuitively was feeling. Because not everybody is in a place where they can listen to what you're feeling. And so I now like to practice the act of listening more than I speak, acting wisely 
and asking myself, is this helpful for the, for the other person? And what are my motivations for sharing this? Sometimes when I feel something for somebody else, more often than not, I will keep it to myself, but I will be there for them. I might reach out and ask how they are. I might let them know that I'm here to support them no matter what. And I wait for them to tell me if something terrible has happened and then I'll be a friend for them and just support them because sometimes that's all you can do and perhaps when you get those intuitive nudges for other people it's so that you can prepare yourself to be the friend for them that they need. Tell me what are your intuition stories? I love hearing people's intuition stories. I love hearing what happens when people listen to those small nudges, that little voice, that gut feeling. I love hearing about people's businesses that are created because they listen to their intuition. I love hearing about organizations that happen and the people that they've been able to help. So please let us know in the comments. I know that everyone else would love to hear it too. So let us know in the comments on your intuitive stories. If you wanted to learn more, about the introverted intuition that an INFJ has, which is an INFJ personality type's biggest superpower, then please watch this video here and I will see you over there.